What are suspension lift kits? What are the good sides about them and what are the bad sides? What exactly changes when you lift your vehicle? Which parts do you actually need for a proper lift? And ultimately, what should you choose for your 4x4? All of this coming up in this video right now. Hello, I'm George and welcome to the channel where we're discussing off-road vehicle modifications, share four-wheeling tips and techniques and take you on some off-road adventure trips. Today's topic, suspension lifts. There is lots of info online, but no simple answer in plain English. What do you need to get? One inch, two inch, three inch, four inch? What are you gaining? What are you sacrificing? What are the pros and cons that you need to be aware of? And look at this. What is all that? Which parts do you actually need to make it work and why? All right, let's start with why is it good to have a higher suspension lift in the first place? By lifting the vehicle higher, you get a steeper approach angle when facing an obstacle, an improved breakover angle or clearance at the center of your vehicle, and of course a greater departure angle at the rear. Better wheel articulation, or let's say greater wheel travel, gives you a better chance to keep all four wheels on the ground and that means a better grip on uneven terrains. Bigger lifts are making room and allow you to fit bigger tires. On the opposite end of the spectrum, why is it bad to have a higher suspension lift? Let's get one thing straight about suspension lifts, and the same goes for almost any kind of off-road modification. If it's getting better off-road, it is getting worse on the road. A higher center of gravity means less stability at high speeds and a more wobbly feel on the corners. It is what it is. Just something to keep in mind and be aware of. So, what are your options? Let's start with one to one and a half inch lift. It is done with just spring spacers and strut spacers. Very simple and easy to fit. What are the advantages of this lift? Well, by far, it is the cheapest option. And it's pretty much it. You can fit slightly bigger tires than normal. What are the disadvantages of this option? Well, you're still running with your stock shocks and springs on your vehicle. So there is no extra articulation and no added capabilities off-road. It is worth noting that on the Jimny, you don't need to fit strut spacers at the rear. Instead, you fit a repositioner just like this. It also helps to take the extra strain from the shock bushes after a lift caused by the new angle of the axle. Next, you have the 2-inch lift. By far, this is the most common option. Just ask 100 people and you'll find out that more than half of those running some kind of suspension lift are having a 2-inch lift. And there is a good reason why. Unlike with the one inch lift option, here you actually get that extra articulation that makes your vehicle more capable. Also, you do get aftermarket shocks that will have better performance. And the aftermarket springs could be upgraded for the added weight that you are carrying off-road. In addition, this is the easiest option to fit. Just a set of springs and shocks and you're ready to go. A hassle-free option. So, what are the disadvantages of this option? Well, you simply want more. Bigger lift, bigger tires, more capabilities. And that's a fair point. So, moving on. 3-inch lift. 
First, let's say that if you are driving an independent front suspension vehicle, you should limit yourself to 2 inch lift. Going any higher than that means that the short arms found on stock IFS vehicles will be working at some very unnatural angles. There will be a lot of extra strain on the CV joints, hard to correct wheel alignment and the whole suspension geometry will be upset. The dilemma between the independent front suspension vehicles and solid axle vehicles deserves a video on its own, but pretty much 3 and 4 inch lifts are for solid axle vehicles. So what do you need to get? First up, you need extended brake hoses. It's the simplest thing. The stock brake lines are simply not long enough and you don't want to rip them off. That's why you need to get extended ones. Next, cast the corrected radius arms. When you lift the vehicle, the angle of the radius arms changes, twisting your differential forward. That's your caster angle. The result is that the steering wheel doesn't self-center very well and it feels kind of vague. Caster corrected radius arms will put those things back to normal. 3. You need a front prop shaft spacer. Having caster corrected radius arms means that the prop shaft won't be sufficiently long anymore. To fix that, you put a spacer. And 4. You need adjustable panhard bars. When you lift the vehicle, you will find that the axles and the car body move in opposite directions. Having adjustable panhards means that you can get the axle back in the center. Wait a minute, don't you need all those parts with a 2 inch lift? The answer is no, it might be nice to have, but you definitely don't need them. The differences are still small enough that the car will compensate for it. And finally, 4 inch lift. Unless you have a big pickup truck, this is pretty much your limit and as high as you can get. And if that's your choice, congratulations, you're making the first step into having a true off-road vehicle. So, what do you need to have? First, an even longer brake hoses. Then, an even better caster corrected radius arms. And then, an even larger prop shaft spacer. And here, remember, some vehicles might not have a prop shaft that will be able to work in these extreme angles, so you need a brand new prop shaft with high angle capabilities. Note that for some 4x4s, a high angle prop shaft will be needed even at 3 inches. And finally, the panhard bars. They not only need to be adjustable, but it's a good idea to drop them lower. Restoring a closer to stock position of the panhard mounting point helps you to reduce the parts fatigue that builds up when turning the wheel. Can you go without all those extra items on the list? Sure, but hopefully now you will know what each part is for and what you will be sacrificing and need to keep an eye on if you go without it. In conclusion, the higher the suspension lift, the worse it would perform on the road. The faster will all mechanical components wear down and will require more frequent maintenance or replacement. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't lift your four-wheel drive. It is something that you need to keep in mind and be on top of it. So, have you found this video helpful? Let me know in the comments and consider subscribing to the channel for more off-road related videos. It helps a lot. And I'll see you in the next one.